tonight's episode of Reality Check is sponsored by Raycon. We live in the dark ages of the internet culture. We live in a time where people will do anything for views. Anything. Anything. They would record a dead body, eat a cat, they would throw a cat. People do some crazy shit for some views on the internet. So in today's age with all the catfishers, the, the clickbaiters, the Instagram models who just Photoshop their bodies and they're not actually that attractive or perfect, they just, you know, do a bunch of filters and shit. What if we took that and then made it into a reality show? But... The reality show is actually written by people who have never been on the internet in their lives. I, I think that could work. The Circle is a show where a bunch of really loud, annoying people all get their own apartment in the same building. But there's a twist. The only way these people can interact is through an app called Circle. And everyone's goal in this game show is to get the most likes. It's kind of like a Big Brother meets Catfish type show. And yes, I realize Catfish is actually a show that is saying catfishing is bad. You know, like, don't catfish. We're exposing you for catfishing and manipulating people. Well, this show does the exact opposite and jokes about it and says it's not that bad to catfish. Hell, they promote it. They, they want people to do it. I'm just going to give everyone a fair warning that this is probably the most painful show I've sat through. And I sat through all 12 episodes. Listen, I know that reality shows always try to up everything. You know, the people on the show, they tell them to be way more hyperactive than they would in, in a normal situation. That makes sense. I mean, obviously it's for TV. But dear Lord, everyone yells. Everyone's yelling all the time. Hashtag, yeah, buddy! How the hell does this show have so high of ratings? I, I don't get it. Rotten Tomatoes thinks The Circle is better than Fight Club. What the fuck? The problem I have with the show is the abysmal cast and how they eliminate people and how people win and how they blatantly set up situations that are obviously scripted and they told them to do, but they try to play it out like, no, no, this is, this is all just spontaneous of the moment. We had no idea. I suffered through these 12 episodes, so you suffer with me, damn it, because I don't know how I made it past the first episode. Hell, I don't know how anyone made it past the first episode. Just the intro of everyone just makes me vomit. Welcome to The Circle, the real life game that asks, how far would you go to be popular on social media if there were $100,000 at stake? Really? Y you really want to try to crack open that egg, huh? Lady, I, I, I really don't think you understand what you've done. Do you know how, how much people do for a couple hundred views, a couple thousand views? Five dollars. You want to know how much people do for that type of shit? And you're putting a hundred K on the line? It's gonna be a goddamn bloodbath. Now, honestly, my first time watching this, I was a little bit confused on the premise of the show because at the beginning, they're talking about, you know, who gets the most likes, who gets the most views, who gets the most uh, attention, basically. And in my mind, I was like, oh, they're gonna be making YouTube videos, they're gonna be making Instagram uh Photoshop pictures and stuff like that and see who gets the most likes now initially I was like hey That's a pretty cool idea that would probably make for a pretty good show But nope somehow they made it way more boring than that because like I said in the beginning It's all on an app called the circle But the weird part about the show is it seems like every dialogue spell every time someone starts a conversation with someone it lasts five messages this is pretty much how the conversations go hey how are you doing today pretty good but not as good as you because you're sexy oh my god that's so fucking like totally cute of you to say god i love you we're best friends dude we're totally best friends oh my god let's make an alliance let's make I an totally alliance we're got best your back friends. babe oh my god my dad died when i was five your dad died? Mine did too. Oh my god. Oh really? See ya. That that's literally every conversation. Look, I know a lot of you are thinking, oh, they cut it down, they make it shorter, you know, just so you don't want to see all the bullshit that they say. But man, I that's hard to believe because when I look at the screen and I only see four messages and it hasn't even scrolled up or down and the conversation's over, I'm I'm assuming that's it. I'm assuming that's all they say to each other. So anyway, each episode they have a voting session where all of them vote anonymously to rank the people. And the top two people of that week get to decide who leave. And then someone new comes in and then rinse and repeat. I think the elimination process and pretty much everything they have about new people coming in and old people going out, 
it sucks and it's unfair, but we'll talk about that later. Let's meet the cast, shall we? Oh, damn, Gina. Number one, stereotypical gay man who is sassy, fierce, and a hood spiritualist hustler. I'm, so, I'm sorry, what now? What the fuck is that? The fuck is a hood spiritualist hustler? That's a new one. Yeah, buddy. What's up, peeps? I'm Joey Sasso. I'm 25 years old. I'm from Rochester, New York. I'm a bartender. Stereotypical Italian man from New York. He loves his ma. He's a mama's boy, and he's extremely into himself. Hey, mozzarella. People would be lying if they said they didn't like looking at my shirtless selfies posting updates. Okay, this is where things get complicated. Yes, I have. I've sent a dick pic. Hello? Yes, um... Did anyone ask? No, no, no one asked. N no one asked him if he sent a dick pic, all right? Because I'm just trying to find the person who asked because what the fuck? This just reminds me of early 90s MTV shows. What is this? Like, why would you even mention that? And yeah, I sent a girl a dick pic once or twice. Like, what are you gonna do? You know, when you got it flaunted, am I right, boys? No. Got the pre-shave oil right there. Yes, sir. Hydro plumping, retexturizing, moisturizer. These bad boys gotta be smooth at all points in time. But after you do the lip exfoliator, you gotta do the menthol right on the lips. Makes it shine nice and soft. Yes, sir. Yeah, but All right. Oh, Joey, you lovable, annoying piece of shit. Okay, two stereotypes are down. Let's see if we have any other along the way. Summer B just my vibe. Okay, this is super cute. I feel like I'm in New Mexico or Arizona or something like that. Oh, a blonde Instagram model who is extremely into themselves and is a self-proclaimed dork. <laughs> but there's so much more to me. I'm not always sexy 24 seven. Not always sexy 24 seven. Could have fooled me. I mean, look at you. Is that even possible shit? God, I fucking hate her. Bro, she, she, she did the thing. She did, oh fuck, dude. Her personality is so quirky and adorable. Dorky. Definitely a goofball. I'm very klutzy. Like, I'm always joking around. I'm always having fun. That definitely describes me because I'm such a dork. <laughs> Fuck. She's such a dork. So we have three people whose personalities are on a level that I could only imagine myself being at. Now we get introduced to one of the catfishes. And I'll be honest with you. At first, I was kind of okay with the idea of a catfish. But after, like, watching it play out, it just made me feel so uncomfortable seeing him and the other catfishes kind of just fuck with everybody, you know? I get it. It's a show. It's all in good fun. But there's just that thought in the back of my mind that, you know, catfishing's bad and you're manipulating people. And I just, it, I don't like it. Like, it, I like I just want to mention right now to everyone, um, catfishing is bad. Uh, I'm not sure if people know this, but pedophiles, um, um, murderers, and rapists, bad people. Uh, catfish people so they can, you know, chop, chop their limbs off. Okay, we got the homosexual, we got the loud Italian, we got the ditzy blonde. The only thing that I think that could make it better is a nerd um, who doesn't like social media. Bomb, and I'm 23 years old and I'm from California. I am a virtual reality designer. Body electric, I'm raging with Honestly, I think social media is our modern day bubonic plague. Although I despise social media, by me going into the circle, being myself 100% authentically, it can show you don't have to be fake. You can be yourself, and that is good enough. So something that this show does, and they do it really bad, is uh, force the idea of, you know, be yourself. Be yourself on the internet. You know, don't fake it. Uh, uh, be who you are. Love who you are. All this, like, positive bullshit. And the only reason I'm calling it bullshit is because it, it is. I hate it so much when reality shows do this, where they try to cop out, they try to like backpedal, be like, I mean, I know we're talking about catfishing and, and you know, tricking people into liking each other, but wholesome be yourself quote right here, just for you guys. No idea what this is. Oh, it's Play-Doh. He's not gonna put that in his mouth, is he? 
What world would a grown man look at Plato and be like, ah, Plato? It's definitely Plato. What could possibly be the point of them making him eat Play Doh? I bet you he did the Thai Pod Challenge. Dear Lord! That was the most forced attempt at a Tide Pod joke I have ever seen in my life. The fact that there was an attempt that was forced. They forced this to happen. They went so hard to force this man to eat Play-Doh just to get to the point of mentioning Tide Pods. It takes skill to be this cringe. Oh, and of course, we have the party girl, the Lush, who likes to show her ass. Man, this show is really full of a very unique cast. I like it. And then we got Antonio, who doesn't do douchebag stuff. stuff. Me being me, you know, really tall, attractive, douchebag stuff. That comes with a lot of groupies, a lot of girls hitting on you, douchebag stuff. It's just because I'm so trusting and so genuine, douchebag stuff. Boy, oh boy, let me tell you, every time I look at Antonio, the one thing on my mind is that guy does not do douchebag stuff. Look at him. Look at that guy. He, he don't. He don't dabble in the douche. I like to do things using my head rather than my penis. That makes sense. After that comment, I truly think this guy has a great personality. I am choosing to play a catfish named Mercedes. I mean, it's not like I know her in real life. She's just a random chick I found. <laughs> Wait a second here. Um, You don't know who that person is? So not only is this show promoting catfishing, but it's basically saying that Taking someone else's photos, someone you don't know, and then using them as a catfish is just chill, man. It's it's chill, bro. Don't worry about it. Okay, it's all in good fun. I get it. It's all in good fun. But not once did they even go into the idea that catfishing is bad. Not once did they even mention it. The only thing they're doing is basically making it look better than it is. I mean, she's literally stealing photos from someone else. Sure, maybe the show approved it. Maybe she actually got permission from her, but the show does not say that. The show doesn't say she got permission from this girl to use her photos. It's just, no, it's just, look at this random girl. I sure, stole we'll take pictures. me to the Indian visual album, please. He has an album called Indian visual. <laughs> is this an Indian version of Lele Pons? Half of his personality, just the fact that he's Indian? <laughs> That's like if an Asian person was just like, I'm gonna call my photo album Asian Asian. It's, it's actually, it's actually a pretty freaking good idea. If you're Asian, I mean, there you go. It's a pretty good photo album title for you. So the first thing they have to do is rate each other only by their looks. And I mean, I'm not going to say I know who's going to lose, but... Oh, oh, come on, man. Oh my god, I got eighth? Are you kidding me? I didn't even get to finish my sentence. Album, you're seventh because... You're a fucking nerd, and nerds are cringe. This just went from a curiosity to a straight pursuit. I'm hitting 90 on the freeway. I'm coming to get you, girl. Hashtag, yeah, buddy! Joey, shut the fuck up. The players will find out the results later, but who's gonna be first? Who's gonna be worse? And who the hell is Shubham playing ping pong with? Does she just assume everyone watching this show just has some sort of mental disability? Oh, wow, would you look at that? There's a man playing a ping pong without another person. It must be magic. How is that even possible? What? observation is that what is even the point of adding that in there he's the host of the show and she's supposed to add quick little one-liners here and there and that's her that's her shot that's what she's got for us through a heart attack after that last rating <laughs> that's funny send it oh that's so me every time i make a tweet before i send it haha <laughs> that's funny send oh I actually have to physically click it. So this is where they start doing their whole back and forth dialogue, and this happens throughout the show. And that's it. This is kind of just what happens. Like, there's no extra oomph to it. I mean, sure, they play games here and there, but this is all they do. They kind of just yell at a screen. So after they see each other's pictures and a little description of themselves and say two words to each other, they kick someone off already. Like, they, they looked at a pic, saw a description, saw a couple words, boom, bam, they're gone. Like... What, what is even the point? Okay, so let's talk about this real quick. 
reality shows that have some sort of controversial idea, like catfishing, for example, they always try to do damage control in the dumbest ways. They always try to bullshit everyone with these stupid positive quotes, like positive messages, like, oh, be who you are love who you are you can do it kiddo and i hate it so much because after seeing it so many times in so many shows it's so easy to see through this just to give an example of this on this show later on in the show they brought in a plus-sized woman who catfishes someone she knew who was skinny then after being there for a day decides to reveal to everyone that she is a catfish and is actually fat so then they go through this whole emotional bullshit of every single person on the show being like be yourself love who you are don't be fake. I know I'm I know I'm catfishing right now. I know I, I'm I'm playing someone else, but just be yourself. Love who you are. And to those people thinking that this was not just a ploy by the show to kind of like take a couple steps back from the controversy, she got kicked the same day she came in. Not even joking. She revealed that she was fat, then she got kicked off. Which brings me to the dumbest part of the show cycling contestants so basically when someone's kicked off they bring a new person in which to me makes zero sense because obviously the people who are there from the beginning have a way better chance of winning because all of them have been talking to each other for a lot longer than the random people who come in and a lot of people come in there's even new contestants on the episode before the finale like, what is that? Imagine a dude just, like, walks in randomly. These people have been talking to each other for two weeks, and he's like, hey, what's up? And then they all like him, vote him, 100K in a day. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Like, everybody in the beginning, they're already forming alliances. They're already forming their fake bonds and shit. And guess what? The top five people who made it to the finale were all people who were at the very beginning of the show. So it's either one, they just put all these people in because they were worried they wouldn't have enough content with only, like, four people. Or two, they completely unfairly uh, rigged the entire game and then made a bunch of people come in way later on in the game. It just doesn't make sense why they would do it like that because it's so unfair to the people who come in later. But I did end up watching every single episode and man, was this show just empty. It was just copy paste every single show. I'm telling you, it's either they spend the entire episode introducing a new person or they spend the entire episode talking about uh, who they're gonna kick. I'm serious, I remember starting an episode and finishing it. Was that even an episode? Like all that happened was, oh, who are they gonna kick? Let's talk about who we're gonna kick. Bro, bro, you think you're gonna kick her or do you think you're gonna kick him? Bro, I don't know. Let's start a DM together. Bro, I love you, bro. Bro, stay connected, bro. Don't kick me, bro. That's a whole episode. So I deem the show cringe. Like the idea of catfishing can be done in a ethical way without giving off a, a bad idea of it. You know, giving people the wrong idea about catfishing that, oh, this is fun and quirky thing to do. You should do it to other people. They really should at least mention how catfishing is bad and manipulative. But no, all they do is glorify and defend it. And then later on, try to save their own asses by adding sob stories and bringing in a tubby girl who reveals who she is, even though it would have made a lot more sense if she was just who she was from the beginning, you know? If she just showed off that she was a plus-sized woman from the very beginning, that would have been way better than forcing this stupid narrative that, oh, she she's not actually a, a really skinny blonde woman. She's a tubby girl. And then kick her the same day. Seriously, this show sucks. Don't watch it. Netflix, do better. 10 out of 10. And don't worry. I'm keeping my eye on you too hot to handle. I'm keeping my eye on you, you piece of shit. But thank you everyone for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Now, before you go, I have a wonderful sponsor from the amazing people at Raycon. Once again, boom, bam, where are they at? Where are they at? Hey. Raycon earbuds, some of the best sounding, best feeling, best tasting. Those of you who watch my channel already know what this is about. These babies, the E25, start about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds. I mean, I've been sponsored from them for a long time and I still have never had any issues. These are great for working at home, 
walking around at home. Maybe you want to take a jog or something like that. Listening to music, watching YouTube videos, you know, doing your thing, playing games. This could even be used as just regular computer earbuds. I mean, they have six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, and a really compact design that makes it really comfortable in your ears and really easy to carry around. And if you're a little bit quirky, they come in different colors. So what are you doing with your life? Why don't you have these earbuds in your ears right now? Ser seriously, if you have them, put them in your ears. If you don't have them, buy some and then put them in your ears and then rewatch this part so I know you put them in your ears. So click the link in the description. Get 15% off your first order. Get these E25 babies right here. Every time I do one of these, every time I do one of these ads, I just sit here playing with this thing the whole time because it's it, it, it's a fidgety thing, okay? I like it. But go to buyraycon.com slash bionicpig, get 15% off your order. Get them today. Get them while they're hot. They, they probably won't really be hot when you get them. I mean, they'll probably be room temperature by the time you get them. But you should still buy them anyway. But thank you guys for watching. Go to the link. Boom, bam. Bye-bye.